if we're looking at people investing in South Africa and South African SMEs starting up and going global themselves, do you think the development of the BRICS Bank and our relationship with countries like Brazil and Russia, mm -hmm. India and China will bolster us? Is, you know, are we able to, to lean on them for support? I think, look, you know, South Africa playing its part in BRICS and the BRICS Bank, I think it's, um, it's, it's a good thing. It's a good thing that South Africa is represented on a global stage, whatever that stage may be. So I think generally it's a very positive thing. From an SME perspective, I'm not so sure. I think, um, you know, again, if you talk to the South African SME Association and talk to their, their members, which we, we support, and there are fantastic groups of people and, and hundreds, of, hundreds of SMEs who are involved with them, I think they're looking for real tangible support. Uh, and when, when, when you ask them, what does that tangible support look like? It is the things I've already mentioned, which is, you know, help us to understand how do I take my fantastically successful domestic product global? You know, how do I do it? You know, how do I find customers? How do I make sure I get paid? How do I market my product? What paperwork is required? What's the customs regulations like? You know, how do I move it? Do I move it by air, sea, road? What, you know, how do you move it? So I think they're looking for very tangible knowledge around what, how do I connect him with the rest of the world? I think this sort of, you know, the world is a much smaller place now, and, and there's, a, there's a fantastic example of this. There's a lady uh, in Ethiopia, as an example, uh, who some 10 years ago uh, worked out that um, taking the, the discarded tires, vehicle tires, and using them to make shoes, soles of shoes, and she called her company Soul Rebels. And uh, she, she also has a, a, a very, she's also designs very nice uh, looking shoes but she to the point she was selling that very domestic uh, very successfully domestically and it wasn't until she sort of connected with DHL that she identified that actually um, there's an opportunity to take this product globally mm -hmm. and I think brand Africa is a very exciting and somewhat sexy subject at the moment so people in America people in Europe people in Asia are attracted by the sort of mystique of brand Africa and she now employs something like 40 odd people and uh, went from you know, one person to 40 in a very, and does hundreds of shoes every single month now to America. So, you know, I think that, that story is replicated times 100 in almost every market we go to, where there's you know, companies who have very, very successful domestic businesses and great, I, again, I repeat, Africa's entrepreneurialism is second to none. So they're very creative, very good at identifying how to create niche products. Uh, what they're looking for is that support, you know, tangible support on how to take their business and make it more sustainable. And, you know, a lot of a lot of SMEs go to the wall every year because they fiscally just can't afford to keep going. Yeah. And I think you know what what our research has shown, um, along along with many others, I hasten to add. But our research has shown, the more globally connected they are, the more likely they are to be long term successful and sustainable. Mm.